is Danny from the Pleasant Hills Public Library, and I am so excited that you're here with me today for another STEAM Creatures. So before we get into it, let's see if we can remember what all the letters in STEAM stand for. Do you remember? Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Math. That's pretty cool, huh? And we're going to use all five of those subject areas today to learn a little bit more about polar animals. So when I say polar animals, what do you think of? Hopefully you think of the animals that live in the Arctic and the Antarctic. So the North and the South Poles of Earth. Animals such as polar bears and penguins, walruses, seals, Arctic foxes, and there's some other animals too. So let's take a moment to look at some images and short video clips featuring animals that live in the Arctic and Antarctic while we learn a little bit more. The coldest places on Earth are the Arctic and Antarctica. The Arctic is located in the Northern Hemisphere and includes the North Pole. Antarctica is in the Southern Hemisphere and includes the South Pole. Both regions are considered polar deserts as they are covered in ice and receive very little precipitation. The Arctic consists of an ocean surrounded by land and includes portions of Canada, Greenland, Russia, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Iceland, and the United States. Antarctica is a large landmass covered in ice that is surrounded by ocean, and because of this, it's much colder. In fact, the average winter temperature in Antarctica is negative 76 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's only negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit in the Arctic. The summers are still cold, with an average temperature of negative 18 degrees Fahrenheit in Antarctica and 32 degrees Fahrenheit in the Arctic. Despite these cold and harsh climates, many different animals and even people call the polar regions home. There are no permanent human residents in Antarctica, although thousands of scientists do visit every year. Antarctica is home to several marine animals, including penguins, seals, sea lions, and whales. In fact, the emperor penguin can only be found in Antarctica. Emperor penguins are uniquely adapted to survive the harsh conditions, with two layers of feathers, a good reserve of fat, and smaller beaks and flippers than other penguins. And besides those physical adaptations, emperor penguins have a successful behavior adaptation to fight the cold. They huddle together to stay warm. The Arctic, however, is home to many more animals and several cultural groups of people. Over 75 species of mammals can be found there, 16 of which live on or under the ice. Animals native to the Arctic region include seals, walruses, Arctic foxes, snowshoe hares, reindeers, musk ox, and polar bears. Did you know that polar bears aren't actually white? It's true! Their fur, which covers their black skin, is hollow and reflects light, while also trapping the sun's heat and helping keep them warm. Besides this amazing adaptation, polar bears have a layer of blubber under their skin, which acts as insulation. Other marine animals, such as seals, walruses, and whales, have blubber too. Blubber is essentially a thicker, fat layer under their skin, and other animals, such as the arctic fox and snowshoe hares, have a similar but also slightly different layer of fat. It's amazing how these animals and people have adapted to living in the world's coldest places. And now, friends, I'd like to share a story with you featuring one of those arctic animals. This is The Arctic Fox's Journey, written by Wendy Pfeffer, illustrated by Morgan Huff, and read today with permission of HarperCollins Publishing. So let's see. Hmm. Wait a minute. This fox is brown. During spring and summer, Arctic foxes live in family groups, but in the fall, each fox goes off on its own. During winter's long, cold, dark days, some Arctic foxes take dangerous but amazing journeys. One fox starts her winter wanderings in late fall. She roams alone across the tundra, a rocky, windswept, treeless plain. As colder weather sets in, the fox fox's warm coat slowly turns from brown to winter white. And that's good. 
It camouflages her from hungry Arctic foxes and polar bears. So now she can blend in. The Arctic fox is on the prowl. Suddenly, her ears twitch. She hears the hustle and bustle of her favorite food, a fat, furry lemming. These little rodents scurry around under the snow. The fox leaps in the air, then plunges through the lemming's snowy roof, and she dives under the snow to grab dinner. But the little lemming darts through a network of tunnels out of the fox's reach. The Arctic fox plods away hungry. The snow swirls, the wind howls, the air is freezing cold. Finding food is not easy. Lemmings are scarce and summer berries are gone. Did you know that Arctic foxes' senses help her catch the lemmings? Arctic foxes have strong hearing and can tell which direction sounds are coming from. They can hear lemmings moving around under four to five inches of snow. They can smell the lemmings under the snow too. That's quite impressive. Still hungry, the fox does something brave to find food. Although she's only as big as a house cat, she follows a huge polar bear. The bear spots its favorite food, a young ring seal swimming under the water. The seal heads for a hole in the ice to come up for air and the bear heads to the ice and drags the seal out of the hole. So have you figured out what the fox is doing yet? The bear eats only the seal's fat, so the fox waits patiently. After eating its fill, the bear lumbers off, and the hungry fox hurries over and munches on morsels of seal meat. She eats until she is full, and there's only a few bones left. So she's doing a little bit of scavenging there. The fox heads further north into the wilderness towards the top of the world. The Arctic fox does not migrate south to warmer places, and she does not hibernate for the winter, resting in a safe place. Instead, she faces starvation, bitter cold, blinding blizzards, and gusty winds sweeping across the sea ice. No one knows why she heads north. In this harsh environment, her journey is full of dangers as she treks over ice-choked waters, across frigid glaciers, and around rocky, snow-covered peaks. On one steep cliff, the hungry fox spies an egg on the edge of a ledge. The egg was laid last summer, and now it is frozen in the rock-hard ice. Clawing at the egg, the fox loosens tiny bits to eat. Weeks later, still searching for food, she senses something ahead. In the dark, she sees a huge object, but it's not moving. She hurries and finds a dead musk ox. Animals, probably other arctic wolves, have devoured most of its meat. The fox scrapes the bones and feeds on a few dozen scraps. For the next three months, the sun never rises. Winter is one long night. Sometimes the northern lights give off a green, red, or blue glow. They swirl around and light up the sky. The fox growls and howls, filling the night air with an eerie song. Surrounded by an icy world, the fox looks like a little ghost with her snow-white fur blowing in the wind. The wind picks up and violently tosses sharp pieces of ice as big as hailstones at the fox. Behind a snowy mound on the ice-covered ground, she curls into a ball, sheltered from the powerful wind. Her long, bushy tail covers her nose and acts as a scarf. Patiently, she waits out the blizzard. Did you know that Arctic winters get bitterly cold, often 30 degrees below zero Fahrenheit? People can freeze, but not the Arctic fox. She can even survive at 45 degrees below zero Fahrenheit, the coldest Arctic temperature, because she has a winter coat of incredibly warm, thick fur. Even her small ears and feet are covered with thick fur. When the storm passes, ice crackles. Icebergs moan and groan, and the moon hangs low in the sky. The fox starts to roam again, cutting a trail in deep snow. She looks like a snowball blowing sideways and rolling around in the wind. 
During the long, dark winter, the fox wanders over ice and scrambles onto a huge glacier. She jabs her claws into the ice to keep from slipping. Finally, she treks off the glacier and heads towards a craggy, snow-covered peak where she wanders over the ice. The fox has wandered in a big circle and has traveled almost 1,700 miles. As the days pass, changes begin happening. The fox can tell that she should keep heading south towards the tundra where she began her journey, and each day the sun shines a little longer. As the sun warms the air, icebergs rumble. Some break and tumble into the sea. The fox sees moss growing on the rocks, and birds returning to the tundra peek at the moss. One day, the fox slides down an icy hill and falls into fluffy snow. Hearing rustle and hustle beneath her, the fox dives down, and this time, she catches that fat lemming. What joy! Spring has returned to the tundra, and so has the arctic fox. In six months, she traveled over 2,000 miles and found her way back to the tundra without any landmarks to guide her. The Arctic fox accomplished something amazing. She survived. On your notice, her fur changed back to brown, so now she's camouflaged with this new spring and summer surroundings. It's pretty cool. So the things that kept her warm were her very, very thick fur that covers all of her body. But foxes also have a layer of fat under their skin, similar to blubber, which we're going to learn a little bit more about in a minute, but not quite the same. It acts the same, though, as an insulation from the cold. Pretty fascinating, huh, friends? And now it's time for steam. We have a steam kit available in our lobby while supplies last with pretty much all the supplies you'll need for this experiment. Now, if you can't get our kit for whatever reason, chances are you have things that you can make work at home to do this experiment. All right, friends, let's head over to the craft table to learn a little bit more. Included in our steam kit and supplies you will need for this experiment include a little bit of shortening. We've included vegetable shortening, but any type of cooking shortening or lard would work. A plastic glove, a plastic spoon, although a regular spoon would work too. Other supplies you'll need include towels or paper towels or anything to dry your hand off. You might also want a stopwatch. It's not necessary. You could also just count out loud. And a bowl of ice water. The colder, the better. All right, you have all your supplies. You ready to learn how to do this experiment? Let's do it. To learn more about how blubber and stored body fat keeps animals living in the polar regions warm, we're going to do an experiment. First, we need to do a control, meaning something that we haven't altered. So pick a finger, whichever finger you'd like on either hand, and we're going to put it in the ice. And then you can count out loud or use your timer to see how long you can keep that finger in the ice before it becomes uncomfortable. Are you ready? It's going to be cold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I can't do any more. That's too cold. So how'd you do? Do you do longer than me? Seven seconds isn't terrible, but it's also not a really long time. And now we're going to try the other hand, but with a layer of fat or blubber. And since we're using shortening and it's pretty greasy, we provided you a glove. So you can put the shortening on the glove and not on your finger. So you're going to wrap as much as your fingertip as you can with the shortening. So let's do it. All right. Do you have your blubber finger ready? Let's see how long our blubber finger can last in that same frigid water. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. You know what, friends? 
I could keep going. I don't even feel the cold. Isn't that amazing? So, how'd you do, friends? Was your blubber finger able to stay in the water longer? I'm willing to bet it was. Now we know a little bit more about how blubber and stored body fat keep animals in the Arctic and Antarctic warm. It acts as a layer of insulation from the frigid temperatures, the blowing wind, and the freezing water that they call home. It's another amazing animal adaptation. Well, friends, we would love to hear from you. Whether you did the experiment, whether you enjoyed it, if you have any questions, please feel free to send us an email to pleasanthills at einetwork.net. There's only one week left of steam creatures, and that's next week, where we're going to learn a little bit more about birds. Until then, friends, stay safe and have a great day. Bye!